Joining me now is Corbett Wall of National Beef Wires Feeder Flash. We are speaking to those who follow the cattle market, which crashed in July. Could you kind of give a month to month summary from basically where we left off in July to where we are now? Well, we came through July with extreme drought in some of your biggest production areas, mainly central Texas, but also in the, in the Northern Plains and slightly in the Midwest too, in your big cattle areas of Missouri and Arkansas and places like that. A lot of producers had to call their herds a lot more than they had planned to, a lot more than they wanted to. Hay has become extremely high and not affordable to people that are just having to feed hay to keep their cows. So a lot of people had to get rid of their cows, which is resulting in lighter numbers. And our market has come to us in a big way in the last six months and is as high as it has been since... 2015 and that's when it was retreating from the all-time record highs of 2014. So going into fall, has there been a category that's pulled stronger? Our fat cattle market has come up a bunch. We're right in the 155 to 57 range right now. Historically, the highest your cattle market has ever been on direct basis is 172. We're nearing that. I have my doubts if we're going to hit that. Our, our light calves are, are selling very well, and they're selling very well early. We normally see your grass grazers come into the market early in the year, maybe in January and February, because they want to avoid the rush of the March and April market. And so they've already come into the market because they know that numbers are going to be tight. They just have to find something to keep those calves alive until the grass turns green. And that's basically what they're wanting to do. But our cow numbers are probably the tightest right now. And then that will lead to our calf numbers being extremely tight. We're just gonna be a lot lower on our springborn calves than we have been. Has there been any behavior in the market from either the producer or the packer side that has people scratching their heads? I haven't seen as many people looking to take advantage for the big demand that there's going to be for replacement stock for breeding stock we are just now in the last few weeks starting to see more producers keeping heifers mm -hmm. back but a lot of them couldn't afford to you know they needed to sell those heifers to to pay bills and the market's come up a little bit affording some producers the option to to keep more heifers back to rebuild their their cow herd but I thought that a bred heifer or a replacement quality open heifer would be higher now than, than what mm -hmm. it is. It's just taking longer. And most of that's due to your input and, and, and lack right. of feed. But uh, normally we would see that. I think our high market, it may last three mm -hmm. years. We might have a better window to make some money for a while because your producers weren't able to reload as quick. In your opinion, with that longer window, are we just going to see a continuation of pretty good prices rather than what we expected, you know, short blitz? Yeah. Within the last six or eight months, people say, you know, how good is this thing going to mm -hmm. get? You know, how high is it going to get? I think we're in it now, you know. Uh, 500 pound steer calf which is what a lot of people try to raise is bringing you know two dollars and 25 cents a pound that, that's mm -hmm. pretty good a lot of top quality 600 pound calves are bringing two dollars a pound as a rule of thumb producers usually want to yield a thousand dollars a head from their calves they're doing it now but like we've said several times already the input costs and the lack of feed is, is taking fun. And a thousand dollars today would be something like, you know, eight hundred dollars two years ago with just the cumulative rate of inflation. Exactly. This is five minutes of a 45 minute interview I did with Corbett Wall. You can click on the link down below for the full interview, but as a disclaimer, there was a lag between the two recordings and the audio lags in such a way that it appears as though I'm cutting them off at a few different points. I wanted to mention that as a matter of respect, that is an overlap in the recording and not real time communication. And please watch this video next where I talk about why beef is expensive but ranchers are broke.